So, something different. Uh, it's not particularly technical talk. Uh, I was kind of wary of uh, submitting it, but it has been voted, so you got it. <laughs> uh, so, what it's like to be a consultant uh, listed on Glassel.org. First, how it ended up there. Uh, I run a small, tiny company. We are just five people. And uh, once we used to be mainly devoted to scientific computing. Uh, we use Gluster on Debian since version 3.0. And our typical use case was the multi terabyte shared folder, meaning that you created data ponds, places that uh, could not uh, be uh, where you could store data which we are not able to fit on a single server and for what, uh, an MC square, whatever, it's way, about, way too expensive. So we found Gluster and started using it for this kind of use, ca use cases and it was just fine. And we uh, ran many small Glusters, either distributed or replicated, for years with no problem until Justin Clift uh, sent an email asking for companies that uh, use Glusters and support them. So I said, well, we do. And we ended up on the Glusters.org so consultant page it, uh, pages. And for some time, we were the only one with uh, an English web page because all the three there are all from Europe and we were the only one with an English description <laughs> of the work. So basically, most of the calls went to me. <laughs> so, scenarios. Eight out of ten uh, contacts are like that. Someone calling from the United States asking, could you assist us on this and that Glasser project? And I send my standard uh, answer that contains the phrase we're based in Italy, support option are obviously conditioned by our physical location and I never hear <laughs> them back again. I want to stress, however, that our location is clearly stated on Gluster.org pages and that should tell you something about the people attention span nowadays. <laughs> The ninth kind of scenario is someone else looking basically for a scapegoat and that phones and says, okay, would you be able to maintain and operate Blaster for us and would you be able to provide some ridiculous uh, SLA? The answer obviously is no, we cannot. Red Hat can maybe. Uh, and but this uh, opens uh, a question for a consultant. And so, if you want to provide this kind of support, uh, you don't want things to break too often. And what is the long-term support, rock-solid, stable version of Gluster community? Probably there isn't. So that's another option, because you don't want uh, Reg regressions, if you do an update or something like that. And release pace is accelerating, I think, uh, looking at the new guidelines, new feature coming, and new version uh, that will be rolled out uh, even faster. So this kind of support, uh, it's prob probably going to be out of question uh, even more. But as quoting a recent Jeff retweet, a project is not a product. And Gluster is definitely a project. Red Hat Gluster storage is probably a product. I don't know because I never had to deal with it. Well, so up to now, failures. And, but you always want to learn from failures. And what can we learn from that? that Probably a US-based Gluster consultant it might do okay, just because most of the requests come from the United States. And I should, I should stop wasting time with them because uh, I did two, two actual uh, jobs for them and one has never been paid and the other. 
where it's fast and also it would be nice to have business partner in the US just for referrals just to, to tell well we cannot do that but there is this company that might help you and uh, just for a small finder fee or something like that or even give the referrals to Red Hat because it seems there is a need for cluster community support at least in the US or it will make sense to try to provide SLAs and stuff like that to network between cluster consultants uh, some of the co other consultants are here so to tell me and see what happens to you but maybe we can find something interesting to do uh, there are other cases of like, success in supporting open source projects using a federation of companies uh, it comes to mind PostgreSQL which where there is a company called Second Quadrant that basically works just like that uh, federating companies all over the world and providing support and exchanging tickets so uh, now more into the details what kind of requests I get basically small providers that want VM storage for Proxmox which seems a really popular solution to host VM on top of cluster and iSCSI or they want to provide iSCSI devices to pre-existing VMware uh, clusters or Windows machines um, e-commerce shops that are using cluster to store uh, things publishing houses either uh, both digital news or journals uh, um, e-learning and security surveillance people dealing with videos doing person of interest stuff uh, something <laughs> like that plus a mixed bunch that is basically misusing cluster <laughs> uh, who actually did business with me well people looking basically looking for a review of their configuration or install and uh, most of them hurt themselves before is a misconfiguring cluster or misconfiguring cluster in a cloud setup or uh, they just were scared of the configuration they made but they for some reason they cannot call Red Hat for support and then uh, we are using cluster ourselves for our clients whenever uh, the storage needs grows beyond what a single server can do and so they got it even if they don't know it or something and well people that don't want to spend much money and you have to notice that nobody that has my one typical use case scenario so the big uh, file storage ever calls me that should probably tell that Gluster works just fine for the basic uh, usage. Only people that do something strange or peculiar actually go around looking for support. Which actually was what happened to me before. I used it for years, even on older version, and it was just fine. Stories. Now, that's the overview of what happens to me as a cluster consultant. Cool. My only business success with a US based company it was really a quick solution, an hour consulting. And it was an e learning company where they had a hardware based 3.5 distributed replicated setup up to roughly. 60 terabytes uh, in the US, geo replicated to UK, serving uh, static content, mainly videos for the e learning session, and then uh, plus some WordPress for uh, interactive stuff. Uh, and they said, We are really happy with it, uh, we, we are able to solve ourselves our problem until recently when it became slow responsive and LS takes the order of minutes to start listening and the solution they almost provided them themselves they had an enormous amount of 
of uh, files just in the root of the volume and so you know when you start your and they said well I'm really surprised that it lists at all my machine will just crash <laughs> you have really good hardware <laughs> and so solution was really well no, was not easy but root cause identification was really easy do a basic cache structure in your directory and be done with it if well this if you want is a special case of another thing that I call the cluster key value store this um, <laughs> that many people try to do for example I got a call saying we store many small files generated by legacy AES400 application. If you don't know what an AES400 is, you are not losing much, uh, and you probably don't want to know. And the files are just at most 1K long, and we would like to speed up Blaster. And while well, there is no real solution to that, uh, why don't you use a database, actually? <laughs> uh, probably it's better suited for the case, or uh, we are assessing cluster reliability, we are not happy, we write 1k file to a replica 3 cluster, peers are also run processing apps and nginx, and we read directly from the bricks, because we need fast read performance, if we pull the plug on a server, cluster and sub inconsistency, this is unacceptable. We think we might be replacing it with MongoDB, uh, well, okay, do it. <laughs> uh, anyway, you are running without quorums. <laughs> but they didn't pay me for it. <laughs> um, and so but many people just, you know, start cluster and think that uh, it's okay to do some sort of key value store stuff. On that. But this is most of what I get uh, the, about requests and that someone wants to set up cluster in a cloud environment because everyone is now moving to the cloud but when they move there I say where where is my NetApp uh, I used to have a NetApp for, for to do this kind of application so they look around and uh, find cluster and they use it as a replacement for NetApp in the clouds because uh, since there is no real competitor for that, that kind of use case uh, Luster or BGFS have different use cases they basically assume InfiniBand to be there and they are thought for uh, HPC computing Lizard MooseFS, uh, I have no ex direct experience with that, but it seems they depend on multicast uh, for high availability of the metadata server, so a client told me at least, and that was the reason why they discarded it, because for example on Azure it doesn't work, multicast doesn't go through, and so you cannot use it. About Amazon Elastic File System, I don't know, probably someone else uh, of you knows, uh, it seems to be, it should be the cluster killer for the application in the cloud, but I think it is just available on a single region, uh, I think the Seattle one, and I don't see it spreading around, so I think uh, they think that it's not, uh, it's not probably so stable as they would like her because it's difficult. Maybe the Facebook people <laughs> should uh, give them advice <laughs> or something about running cluster or distributed file system on really large scales. Don't know. And or that people probably would <coughs> go to Red Hat to ask for cluster support, but that Red Hat does not support their specific kind of environment. Or like VMware clusters, uh, Azure, like uh, as I think maybe Azure now it is supported, but not uh, since uh, some months ago. Or they are feeling uh, fear of scaling out license costs. And well, most of the problem seems to derive from the fact that cluster has not been designed for scratch for the 
lack of guarantees that you have in a cloud environment and other than that uh, when it will be uh, ready to run in such an environment I will probably go out of business with respect to cluster consultancy. <coughs> Some cluster in the cloud uh, case. Uh, British e-commerce, they were running a web stack running on a VMware provider running 2.3.6 uh, replica 3 cl cluster on two data centers one the geo replica of the other containing static contents to be served uh, from the e-commerce mainly images and PDFs uh, uh, data for products and stuff like that problem maximum bandwidth uh, between the data center and the virtual machine was 200 megabits guaranteed in the sense that you cannot exceed that because they were doing shaping on the traffic and so you all know that the minimum recommended uh, speed for cluster is gigabit and so I said you have a problem uh, with network speed you should not expect it to work uh, flawlessly and in the end to my surprise it is almost okay just because uh, they have small volumes, few megabyte writes per day just when they upload uh, some of their uh, data, new product or something like that from a single FTP entry point and varnish and Nginx effectively shield Gluster uh, from, from traffic because it's just the first hit that goes to the file system and then everything propagates in the web app caches somewhere so you're not really hitting the file system Geo they had a geo-replication issue by copying a directory tree and doing a remo remove uh, move sequence that they used to do updates they were consistently capable of split braining the geo-replicated slave and that's a bug we found in Bugzilla uh, where it is uh, mm, should have been fixed in 3.7.0 but it persists on 3.7.4 and then I never heard from them anymore so I basically stopped looking for evolutions about this issue this is a recent one uh, immutable infrastructure clusters on AWS uh, British publishing houses, uh, publishing journals and uh, they have a single replica 3, 3.6 cluster at the core of the web stack and they have uh, many volumes uh, one EBH, uh, EBS each, no LVM and one, they say, problematic 3 terabyte volume and uh, config uh, could uh, needed some love because it was just a basic quick start one and they, were, they didn't care just threw everything on uh, migrated things from the net up to the cluster and started doing working and the problem was the 3 terabyte volume is obviously that heals and resyncs last two weeks and so when now they want it both to migrate uh, to 3.7 uh, and to create new populated clusters based on their live volumes uh, by cloning the EBS volumes and building clusters on top of them uh, to do tests for the devs or to do migrations uh, and they want to create Dispose, possibly do everything this way by just uh, snapshotting the, the volumes and recreating clusters on top of them just because they could not afford the two weeks resync um, and I've been helped on this uh, story with some hacks uh, and, but that's a use case I'm sure it will pop up again in the future just because people that do these kind of things on AWS uh, would like to take advantage of the cloning and all these features I mean so if there is a 
documented the structure way to adopt, in a sense, volumes to a cluster system, that might be useful. Uh, this one I love, the Andine Brick. In Italian, major publishing, uh, publishing houses, they called me two weeks ago basically desperate because uh, they had incident on Asia. Um, they had several cluster clusters, mostly replica uh, two on Asia, and they are building a few feature, replica three towards the main news site, and it's really an important one with an heavy traffic for two major newspapers, and configuration was nice no real uh, suggestion to make, uh, but they had uh, two incidents in a month, just because you are on cloud, and, and the incident was uh, the equivalent of partition followed by the equivalent of pulling off a SAS cable from a server. And so, on network partition, Gluster lose server quorums and fans appear. On reconnection, they have lost connection to the virtual disk. XFS file system amounts correctly, but Gluster recreates the directory trees within the empty mount point and self-heal floods the root partition. And it has been reproduced using iSCSI. Uh, and now it is in Bugzilla. Actually, there is something more to that I found out after preparing the slides. They still have to confess completely what they did, but there are at least two problems uh, that can trigger this kind of event. One is they are mounting the SF bricks with a no-fail option, which I don't know why they do. Uh, that uh, and then I f found I modified. Uh, oh, actually, they told me they confessed that they modified uh, the system D unit to always run cluster D. So when it dies, just restarts immediately, <laughs> just because. So, but still, I think. It should not create uh, the directory structure within the empty mount point, but maybe they do something else, uh, or maybe there is a bug there. But don't know. They promise to say to send more documentation and logs, and so could be that the bug is not really a bug, but just. Uh, cause of removing safeguards uh, from the setup uh, in an hostile environment such as the cloud. And then we are trying to do our hyper-converged uh, data center for one of our clients, a journal startup that does genomics, and we got some over spec hardware uh, for the job and uh, we are running uh, the Google Ganeti virtual machine manager on them. We don't use OVIR just because we don't know them and why we have experience with Google Ganeti. And we are installing Grafter.3.7.15 just because I'm a chicken, or you should convince me that it's okay to put 3.8 there. And basically all the VMs will connect on the 10 gigabit storage area network to a cluster and they have some doubt about the configuration and still not decided to do if to do replica 3 or disperse uh, and w if it is better to confine cluster with, with three groups or just run a, an LXC container on that and probably you can give me advice in uh, well, it varies. The workload inside the VMs, uh, it's uh, mainly computation, but you never know. Uh, yeah, what cluster is the common area where you can, all the VMs can share and store uh, the files. I mean, just the code basically will live inside the VMs. Uh, there is 
Mm, okay, we can talk about that later. I want to know the, all the details about that. <laughs> okay, and so thanks to Nils and Josa, my favorite victims when I need support, especially Nils, which is in my time zone, <laughs> and uh, VJ that invited me to the last, uh, to the last uh, developer summit in Barcelona, and made me feel not out of place. Jeff that took the time to explain me, to give me his informed opinion about other distributed file system and the IRC people. And it's really difficult to master Gluster. There are so many things to do and sometimes I feel uh, uh, not up to the task, but then I see something like that and think it, there is hope. <laughs> Okay, I'm done. Uh, question, uh, do you have any experience with customers that have deployed cluster in AWS over EBS uh, block devices and they lose one of the block devices and cluster still continues? Uh, what is the failure rate of EBS for these customers? Actually, the one that lost uh, the virtual machine were on Azure yeah. and not on... Uh, but uh, I think uh, that in general, in the cloud, losing uh, virtual disks is much more common than what are uh, used on hardware setup. And yeah. so you should really... I mean, it's just an hostile environment for this kind of uh, workloads just because uh, it's stateful, you want everything to be consistent, all this process, even cloning, and they are uh, concurrent. Uh, and so if you have, I think you need, I mean, there is not, nothing wrong with Gluster running in the cloud, it's just that the cloud is uh, also, it's a more difficult environment with respect to the one that you can have on hardware. It's other people computing. People can do a live migration of a node uh, without mm, you knowing nothing about it. And that node, basically, at some point, it will stall. And, uh, and so everything starts screaming. And, and then it goes away. And then you get network partitions. And uh, it's just. The most style environment, I think, for, for <laughs> this kind of applic application. More questions? Okay. Great.